This is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche bringing you a video and it is Thursday. The reason I really want to do this video today is that I wanted to pick the winner of the of the winner. <laughs> so in fact, I, I just did it right before I walked in me. I will show you. I have it on my phone. I used one of those generators. The, their, the random comment generator for YouTube. And you put your URL address in there and it will pick somebody. So, again, this is a, a drawing just for watchers of my YouTube floss tube videos and this was uh, for the last video and I did tell everybody what it was so I'm going to announce that at the end. I do have a bunch of stuff to show you. If uh, I look a little out of sorts or whatever today I had eye surgery this morning my eye is still a little scratchy. Uh, it's a cataract I had. It was called a subcapsular cataract, which is one you can't see. It's deep in your eye. And the reason I had I, I had I had the surgery is because I, I really lost the vision in this eye quite quickly. And I was I didn't know what it was. So I sort of ignored it a little bit and then I went to the doctor and he told me what it was and it actually got worse even quicker. So I decided to have the cataract surgery, which by the way is no big deal, seriously. Um, outpatient, they give you a little bit of sedation, not even really nothing. I mean, like a tiny bit, I was pretty much talking to him throughout the whole procedure. And they obviously give local anesthetic in the form of drops. And it's not painful. It does feel like there's something in my eye, which I understand is going to get better. And I look funny because now I had to take one of my, as you can see, <laughs> I only have one lens. So I have some contacts. I think I'll look a little better. The reason I only have one lens is that uh, they put a brand new lens in your eye and it improves your vision. So now I'll have good vision in one eye and my other eye, well, I'll have what I have until that one needs to be done. In general, the cataracts come in both eyes and I only have one for now, so hopefully it stays that way. Anyway, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so. I don't have any brand new finishes because my finisher, who is Ruth over at the Cross Stitch Cupboard, is definitely behind. She has uh, a sampler, a beautiful sampler that uh, I'm waiting on. She has one of my antique round um, boxes that uh, I did a, a, a hand-dyed linen. Actually, it uh, was pink. and. A, it had a Blackbird Designs little um, finish for the top. She still has that. She has at least three pillows, and she's going to have one soon. Another one, so I don't have another. I don't have uh, something to show you, but maybe this weekend I'll go down there and see if anything's done. But I have a lot, a lot of stuff to show you, so no worries. Um. I just want to show you what's going on with my Carter. I do want to finish this. I'm hoping if my eye is not feeling not scratchy tonight, I will I will work more on this. Um, I'm just looking for the actual Hannah Carter picture. Uh, do I not have it? Do I not have it? Hmm. I'm going to have to go back to my stitching area and see what I did with it. I definitely need the front. Anyway, here's where I'm up to. Once again, this is my own dyed linen. I'll be right back. Let me go get that. I'll put this on hold. 
So, of course I found it. It was on the ground. <laughs> Hannah Carter. And as you can see, I'm up to the very bottom. The entire top is done. And I am here. I am up to the tree. The tree is done in Gloriana, a different color. It's green. I, it looks green on here, but it doesn't. I don't know if it shows up that way. I put little red ornaments on it, and the bugs are done in that yellow. The colors are as follows. The yellow is Dinky Dye's mustard. It's very golden. The, or, the uh, red is Cinnabar by Gloriana. And the green is called Thistle Green. You see it? Definitely looks green. So, this really, there's not much left to do. This will be done. Once again, Hannah Carter on my own dyed linen. I think it's going to look unbelievably nice when done. I could undo this to show you more, but nah, I'll wait till it's completely finished. Um, let's see, where should I put this? Let's put it over here. Okay. New stuff. Should I show you new charts? Should I show you? Oh, I never know what to show. Um, I have some new linen I made. Um, I, I had some people had contacted me and wanted me to buy some linen, some 36 and some 40 count, and I have one extra piece, so I wanted to show you because every piece looks different. 40 count hand dyed linen by me striped you can see the stripes nice 40 count Zweigart base this one has some bigger blotches on it I actually uh, double dyed it meaning at the end I put it back in and put some extra on just to see what it looked like and I want to show you a difference the same exact technique was used to make these two pieces this piece is a fairly low count linen. Um, I think it's, I wrote 27, but actually it's, I think it's more like 26. And this piece is gonna do Mary Yule. This is the same linen that I did the, the companion piece, which is Bah Humbug. See Bah Humbug. Same exact linen. This was cut in half. Yeah. Cut in half. I don't know if you can see that, but same linen. And it just took the color differently. It's a different manufacturer of linen. This one is, I have no idea what it is, but you can see it's thinner. Different manufacturer, different counts, and same technique looks different, different color. Just goes to show you, you never know what you're going to get when you're hand dyeing. Um, they have that with the bigger manufacturers. I have two pieces of, I've seen two pieces of, uh, what was it, Lakeside linen that looked completely different. One was 36, one was 40 count, and they looked like different colors. So, but if anybody's interested in purchasing, they can contact me. Or I am 100% sure I will find something to do on this. I did have somebody who wants 36 count in, and I ordered some plain linen to make it for her. I have some fabric to show. Um, some of these are small pieces of and fabric, and what they are are napkins. But they're so beautiful. Beautiful colors. And they can easily be used for any finish. Oh, I did find this whole bunch at a thrift store. And of course I wash them. But they're all napkins.
i.e. they're all fabric. <laughs> These two pieces are actual fabric. This one is a, a striped piece that could be used for Halloween or Christmas or spring. It's that kind of green, but it's a nice big piece. Unused fabric, beautiful. And this was really nice. This is a piece of Christmas fabric, tartan. Can be used for any holiday. Has backing. Suppose you can make this into a whatever you want. But again, my whole point is to make these things for cross stitch. Did find a cutter. Now what a cutter is, is a piece of uh, usually a it's a uh, tablecloth that has holes in it or something else. This one's got stains and it's a little dingy. I did wash it but I am going to soak it in some biz and then cut it up and any areas that are stained will be left off. But this is real pretty. I mean, see the bells? So this will be cut up into fabric. I wish I sewed better, but again, this will be for finishes. And I have a lot of fabric now. So I gotta cut, cut out buying fabric unless it's super special. But this fabric was so nice, I just uh, decided to do that. Another new find. I had showed you this Flower frog, so pretty. Just uh, and it it was in mint condition. Just needed a little sh um, polishing, and once I polished it, it was beautiful. But I've seen that these come with a bottom part, and they're called a lotus flower. And lo and behold, I found a bottom. So now I have an actual lotus. Isn't that pretty? Shined it up with this real nice um, polish that uh, is anti-tarnish. This is actually one of my favorites now. So we did that. That's a new find. And I have one more new vintage find is this, this dish. This looked bad when I got it because it just was very, very tarnished. I got the tarnished off. The inside is gold wash. And I, I shined it up and it, it's, it's very, very beautiful. I walked away and left the picture, which was individually signed. I'm sorry I did that now. But um, anyway, this is going to be a Christmas pincushion. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to take a ornament size. I'm going to have to figure out exactly how to do it so that the ornament will fit here, make the pin cushion, put some, some sort of maybe stick pins that are Christmas, and we will have a beautiful Christmas pin cushion in this gorgeous container. There's nothing not to like. I really loved this when I saw it. So... I have some shaker boxes to show you, but first let me show you some new, um, should you shaker boxes? Yeah, let's do shaker boxes. So I was so enamored with this shaker box. Remember I showed you this last time? With this beautiful shaker box. And this one is made by Sudbury, just to show you. But I wanted to see some others. These are all handmade in the United States. So I ordered a few different ones, and I'm gonna just show them to you. This shaker box is in the uh, oblong shaker style. It has that nice big wide tongue, and it's a pretty color. And it's made by the workshops of Gerald Hand from Warren, Ohio, handmade from Ohio. It's real pretty. It's not too big, which is good. There are lots and lots of designs you can 
put on the top of these boxes. And you can um, adapt designs as well. Here's another handmade one. This is my favorite one. I just love the color and I love the way the top looks, the way that they, they did that. And this one is made by Fry's Measure Mill. And once again, handmade, just beautiful. Okay. Then I bought an antique one. This is the real deal. This is this a shaker box or just a storage box? It's who knows. But it's that round bent wood style. This one is really old. Can you see? Of course it's unsigned. They never would have signed these because they're utilitarian. These were made to store household goods. Who knows what this one was used for? Who knows who made it? The wood's old. It's got patina. And when I talk about patina, it's the color something gets over time by being oxidized through oxygen in the air. This one really smells like a basement. Oh. Now, basements are something people have up north. In Florida, your basement would be filled with water and would never, it would never fly. There's no basements in Florida, at least this part of Florida. Maybe in North Florida, you could probably have a basement. But um, I grew up with basements, and we, uh, we just, uh, you know, Something that would sit down there for 50 years, or and my parents had stuff down there for a long time, even a book or something, had a particular musty smell. That's what the inside of this box <laughs> smells like, and I think it gives it character. I like how it had damage, and these are old nails. Somebody nailed it here. This is definitely over, easily over 100 years old. This is an, a definite antique. What's the most expensive? Actually, it's not the most expensive of all of these, but it is the real deal. I wanted one to see. And finally, I got a painted one. This one is a uh, green, green painted. It's huge. I mean, nobody signed it. I don't think it's from somebody's craft store, craft ah, workshop or whatever. Who knows who made it? But it's. Somebody made it. I mean, you can't, this is not machine made. You can't make these and painted it. It's got a few scratches, a little bit of wear, but that's okay. And this, boy, you can put a lot of stuff in here. And these all look so nice, just, just sort of sitting together. My favorite one is uh, probably this old one. <laughs> that's one of them. And of course, I like the Sudbury because my finish is on here. But I really like this one, the Fry Mill. I try not to knock those over, but they're beautiful. So, if you're into shaker boxes, there's so many out there you could collect. Some are cheap, some are not cheap, some are hundreds of dollars, and they're beautiful. I mean, I've seen ones online for five, six hundred dollars made by the Shakers, made many years ago. And I've seen ones that are contemporary, that are just beautiful, made in somebody's uh, hobby shop. So, I'm not an expert in Shaker boxes. So, um, I just know what I like and I'm learning about them and I'm reading about them because I do want to become knowledgeable. Okay. Next fine. I'm going to show you a fine that I already showed you. Now here's the issue is that I wrongly attributed somebody to being the person who made this. This awesome, absolutely awesome measuring tape. Jack-o-lantern with fabric was made by Kathy Tonelli. And her business name, I even printed it out, her business name is called Honeycomb and Threads. Just one of the things she makes. She is not a cross-stitch designer, but she makes finishes of all sorts. 
maybe she does designs like maybe it's possible she did this design um, but she doesn't sell her her project she sells finished projects so honeycomb and threads is who made this and i apologize that i wrongly put the uh, the name of the person uh, the wrong name the website that you can buy these on you cannot buy these anymore although she kathy does come out and make new ones but it, it, the website that sells these, and they sell out, is called Primitive Handmaids at Gmail. I'm sorry, PrimitiveHandmaids.com. That's their email. I'm just looking for their website. It's Primitive, oh, here you go. PrimitiveHandmadeMercantile.com. I hope you can see that. This is just, I printed out their, one of their pages, and you can see a lot of the projects that they've sold. There is a host, a whole bunch of people who sell stuff on here. Um, all kinds of primitive items, some cross-stitch related, some not. Um, Delaney Woods, another, uh, one of my favorite designers, uh, sells her items on here. And they're all finished items for the most part. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And on the third Thursday of the month at 9 p.m., the new stuff goes for sale and it sells out. I was very lucky to get, to get Miss Tonelli or Mrs. Tonelli, I don't know, but to get her to sell this to me. I emailed her, I befriended her on Facebook. Um, I asked her to join our page and I asked her to please hold one for me and she did. So I was lucky because I didn't get there on time. I actually went on there, I think it was the next day and they were all sold out. So I wanted to make sure I got that clear. I apologize. I am so sorry. <laughs> so, all right. So I have some new charts and I also have some stuff from the stash pile. First thing are new charts. Um, I have been looking at this chart forever. It's Stacy Nash, 12 Days of Christmas sewing roll. Um, this picture doesn't do it justice, but I love it. Let me take it out of the package. I think there's a glare. I don't remember. I think it was Kitten Stitcher that finished this. Somebody. So I finally got the chart. In fact, I got it on sale. I was excited. Um, made with a, it says a weak style works putty linen, obviously distressed of some sort. Homespun wools, DMC. Oh, it's all stitched in DMC. And there's her aging technique is you will need medium grit sanding block and a bunch of walnut crystals to wear the homespun use the sanding block. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff about sanding, actually sanding the, the homespun and uh, all kinds, but I don't know how far I'll go with that, but I just love the design. So anyway, I finally got this. I was very excited to get it. I've heard people say no chart can, can travel alone. <laughs> So the issue was there was a uh, sale, 20% off these charts to begin with, and then um, if you bought one chart, you got the rest to ship for free. So I was like, uh, let me pick out a few. Um, here's one I had my eye on. This is Summer at Hollyberry Farm. I wish she had uh, she had Halloween or October at Halloween. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. October at Halloween. Hollyberry Farm, she doesn't. Uh, this particular seller didn't, but uh, this was a companion to the Christmas. And I think it's very, very pretty. Summer at Hollyberry Farm. Uh, done on 35 count R&R &R Old Mill Job. You could do this on anything. I could do this on my own linen, my own 40 count linen. I think it would look beautiful. Done with DMC. No, all gentle arts threads. Really nice. Okay. 
Okay. So that's another one I got. And then I also got a Blackberry Lane. Hey, it goes hee hee hee, my pretty. This is so darn cute. It makes the needle fob. I've never seen it before. It was not in the trunk show that I, that cross stitch cover that had. Very pretty. Uh, Blackberry Lane Designs, um, their charts, photos don't do the finishes justice. I saw an entire trunk show and it was magnificent. My only complaint is that there's a lot of colors. That's an awful lot of colors for an itty bitty thing like that, but they're all DMC. Stitch counts 59 by 59. She said, I used a small piece of lavender permanent linen stitching over one with one strand, but it's small. So actually, if you use 28 count, it's two by two. It's pretty small. And then this is beautifully finished. So I got that. And once again, I could, and this comes with a, uh, a little charm even. So I was very happy to get that. And then finally, like I said, 20% off plus, plus I got free shipping. And if you are interested in knowing who sold these to me, um, I will, it's on Etsy shop. Contact me and I will tell you, I'll be very happy. Um, I got a, what the heck, who makes this? Needlework Press called RWNBABC. Fairly new. This is 2018. Once again, her charts are nice paper. I wish in the past they have been um, all this heavy paper, and now there's a piece of this. So, oh, I don't want to show you the chart. This is a, uh, a quick stitch, all cross stitch. Um, there's something about it that's real pretty, and this will adapt to my personal linen very well. So I got that. R, W, and B, A, B, C. She doesn't really say much about the actual, about the, uh, about the original. Um, which is unusual, because usually she does a beautiful job giving you a history, so... So those are my new charts. I know, it's too many, but that's okay. All right. And now let me show you some stuff from my pile. First off is Quaker Christmas by Bygone Stitches, Songs of the Season 2. I had started this and then stopped it and ripped it out because I just didn't like the linen. The linen I actually replaced it with, and the linen was light exemplar. I just didn't like it. Maybe it was the piece I had. It didn't do anything. But the linen that I have decided to use, at least until I, uh, I'm still in the thinking stage, but I, I think I'm going with, is actually a piece of Barn Owl by, who the heck is Barn Owl by? Oh my god, I can't remember. Uh, oh my god, birds of a feather. Gee, that's what happens. You have surgery and you're discombobulated. I don't think you can get the proper color seen. It is a tan color with blotches of green and tan in it. It's got a lot of green, a green tint to it. I think I like the green tint as a background. I'm not 100% sure this is what I want to do for this. I love Christmas songs, so this was a must-do for me. Um, the colors are holly. What's the other one? They're beautiful, the, actual, the colors. Courant, which is a fabulous red. 
and holly. Oh, excuse me, blue, blue spruce. Oh, I thought it was holly. It looks like holly. So just to show you. Here's your holly and blue spurs, which I like these colors. So the verdict is out on this linen. I'm not 100% sure. I have a real nice big piece of this. It's actually a half. Um, I may not do it on this linen because I think this is 32. No, it's 28 count. I wanted to do it on 40 count. So in my stash, fully kitted up, but I'm not 100% sure. That's, that's what's been holding me back on this piece. Another one in my stash is a little kit called Bowl of Full of Scary, Scary 2. Isn't he cute? Very, very cute. And uh, the actual linen that I have is, it says Storrs Harl Blend, but what's in here is Old Town Blend. Oh, here's your colors. They're so nice. Boop. And of course that little fuzziness. <laughs> so, this is a quick stitch. It's got everything you need. Good for taking on a taking on a trip somewhere. So I've got that in my in my stash. I have this in my stash. This is um, actually a, was a special edition kit by Brenda by uh, Brenda Gervais, and it was made for country stitches. Isn't it pretty? It says, when you see me, remember me. And I like the blue. I love the colors. Now, of course, she gives uh, all these beautiful colors. And she gives a plain piece of linen with it, which is it's actually just a cream piece. And she gives directions about how to coffee dye it so that your piece looks like your own, just to show you. These beautiful colors. Aren't they pretty? And here's the piece of linen that, of course, it's not, you, you have to coffee dye. So just imagine, once again, this is coffee and tea dyed. These colors on something like that. They look beautiful. Limited edition kit, forget me not sampler. So pretty. So I have this in my stash. And I have one more to show you. Let's make sure we don't lose this. I don't know what happened in my original packaging. <laughs> it's gone. I showed this on the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche Facebook page called BG1874. Here I can show it a little more in depth. Magnificent. Have you ever seen something so beautiful? The call for linen is 36 count buttercream by Lakeside. I have, I have vintage buttercream. This is a nice, nice, nice linen. Let me see if you can see the color. I hope you can. I'm holding it back because I think the color looks better. And I have all the silks. Oop. Oh. <laughs> this is what makes my video so interesting. I end up dropping stuff. I have all the silks. I'm not going to pull them all out, but I have a fortune worth of silk. I ordered them all at once just to get a taste if you want to look and see these colors of silk. I mean, even the purple. It's beautiful. And I, I want to do this one very badly. So 
I would like to do it on 40 count instead of this, so I may end up, um, if I can find it, I cannot find 40 count, I should have bought it when I, when I was able to, but this vintage buttercream is a beautiful color and it's perfect for this, so this one's ready to go. And that's some from my, from my stash, mostly ready to go except for the Quaker Christmas, which is still a controversy. All right, I'm just looking to see. Aha! Needle minders. So, I spent some of last week uh, making, last weekend making needle minders, most of which are uh, either gifted or sold. Here is one. Reason that has a button in it is that this needle minder, this needle minder had a big hole. So you just can't put a magnet on that hole. It just doesn't look right. It's not going to hold very well. So I had to put in a, I had to coordinate a button. It's just a sort of a nice button. And this is the one for the back. Again, I put a button so it's much easier to, to deal with. Much easier. And then it had this white in the middle and I decided to put a little festive red button. Isn't that pretty? I have a whole bunch of, uh, of Christmas pens that I've collected, so I'm going to show you some that might be made into, into needle minders. In order to make the needle minder, you're going to ruin, ruin the pin because you're pulling the actual pin off. So I think I'll only do them if people ask me, like they want one or something, or if I want to give a gift to somebody. But I'm going to go through some of these just to show you what's there. Pretty, huh? I'm gonna go through every one. That'll bore you. <laughs> this one's so cute with the little bell in the middle. This one. More with bells. Oh, simple one, eight. Angel with a bell. All of these could be made into needle minders. This one. They're all 650s, 60s, 70s. Some are older than others, maybe 80s. Some might be contemporary. This one I think is contemporary. It's just a remake. Just going through this. Uh, look at this one, how pretty with the little bells. I love the ones with the bells on them. It's a kitty cat with a fish. Um, let's see what else we have. Here's another wreath. I didn't even show you the best ones. I'm going to show you those in a minute. Oh, look at these angels with the, with the pretty, uh, not angels, snowmen made out of pearls. Here's another snowman with rhinestones. Here's a candy cane. These aren't even the best ones. Uh, yeah. And of course, I, I had made some that look like this out of the wood. The wood ones are easy because you can put the magnets right on the wood. The wood actually holds the magnet very well because it's so porous. Um, these black magnets are not the strongest, so definitely you want the rare earth uh, neodymium magnets, which are more expensive. They're about four times the price, but they're, they're well worth it. They're much stronger magnets in my opinion. Just going through these and see what else we got. Oh, look at the little deer. Look at these guys, this one's contemporary. This one could make a scissor holder. It's big enough, the big ones you can make scissor holders out of. Oh, are there any more I wanted to show you? Sure, look. Little gift.
little angel. Some of these are older than others. Um, I want to show you my collection. I have them separate because I have them separate. My collection of the Christmas tree ones. One of which I did make into a needle minder and somebody bought it. But just to show you. Nice, huh? This one is probably my favorite. It's very, it is old. But look at it. Hold on. What a needle minder that would make. The old ones, of course, are more expensive than the, than the newer ones. I think I'm going to show you as many as I can. This one's got some age to it. This one's definitely got age to it. This one is very mid-century modern. I love it. This is one of my favorite ones. Just think it's so cool. I love these too with the colors. It's a very pretty one. Show you everyone. Let me just look through here and get you some, maybe some of the better. Some of the, ah, this one's so interesting. Just going through here. I don't know if you want to see every one of them, but I do because I love looking at them. I love wearing them. This one's a real pretty one. It's just the older the better, for sure. Here's a little one, would make a very sweet needle minder. Anyway, I have more, because I, I've been collecting these for a long time. And the only one I have left is one I didn't list for sale, because I don't know if I want to, because it's so pretty, is, is this guy. And of course, my Santa, which I'm using on, uh, which you saw. So I've been having fun with needle minders, and uh, People ask me how to make them. It's, uh, it's really trial and error. You have to just, you know, just to show you my little Christmas basket, how useful these things are. Now I have these little trees in them. All right. Should we do? Yes. Let's do the following. Let's read from a Christmas carol. I really want to get a random page, a random page, a random page. It's hard because sometimes you're thinking, what part of the book could I possibly have? Random page. Look away, look away. Here you go. Random page. Okay, let's see where we are here. As Scrooge looked fixedly at this phenomenon, it was a knocker again. To say that he was not startled, or that his blood was not conscious of a terrible sensation to which it had been a stranger from infancy, would be untrue. But he put his hand upon the key he had relinquished, turned it sturdily, walked in, and lighted his candle. He did pause, with a moment's irresolution, before he shut the door, and he did look cautiously behind it first as if he half expected to be terrified with the sight of Marley's pigtail sticking out into the hall. But there was nothing on the back of the door except the screws and nuts that held the knocker on, so he said poo-poo and closed it with a bang. The sound resounded throughout the house like thunder. Every room above and every cask in the wine merchant's cellars below appeared to have a separate peal of echoes on its own. Scrooge was not a man to be frightened by echoes. He fastened the door and walked across the hall and up the stairs, slowly trimming his candle as he went. 
You may talk vaguely about driving a coach and six up a good old flight of stairs and through a bad young act of parliament, but I mean to say to you, might have got a hearse up the stairs and taken it broadwise with the splinter bar towards the wall and door towards the ba balustrades and done it easy. There was plenty of width for that and room to spare, which is perhaps the reason why Scrooge thought he saw a locomotive hearse going up before him in the gloom. Half a dozen gas lamps out on the street wouldn't have lighted the entry too well. You may suppose that it was pretty dark with Scrooge's dip. Up Scrooge went, not caring a button for that. Darkness is cheap, and Scrooge liked it. But before he shut his heavy door, he walked through his rooms to see that he was all right. He had just enough recollection of the face and desire to do that. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, as they it should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa. A small fire under the grate, spoon and basin res ready, and a little saucepan of gruel upon the hob. Nobody under the bed, nobody in the closet, nobody in his dressing gown, which was hanging up in a suspicious attitude against the wall. Lumber room as usual, old fire guard, old shoes, two fish baskets, washing stand on three legs and a, and a poker. Quite satisfied, he closed his door and locked himself in. So this is the point where Scrooge comes home and he sees the uh, face of Marley in the knocker. Then apparently he, he thinks he sees a hearse in the distance while walking up the stairs. Not much to interpret about that other than this is the beginnings of the beginnings of the story. We, they've already set the stage and showed how mean Scrooge was, what a miser he was. He'd already said bah humbug more than once uh, when his nephew would come to invite him for Christmas and when Bob Cratchit had asked for the day off. And this was the time in the beginning where Marley was going to pay a visit and warn him of things to come. Boy, do I love Scrooge. <laughs> but anyway, I'd love to have a Scrooge needle minder. I'm gonna have to find a vintage pin that looks like Scrooge. I'm sure I can find one maybe from the probably 60s or 70s. Would be nice. Love that era, that mid-century stuff. And uh, see if I can find one and make a a needle minder out of it. Anyway, two magazines, not really, one magazine. This is the 2019 holiday issue. And I just wanted to show you this uh, I got in the mail from the Vermont Country Store. If you like vintage, this is actually a pretty cool place. It's a real store um, up in Vermont, but they do a lot of mail order. And they have quite a few things from the past. They have these great candles that look like the candles that uh, used to have in the 50s, 60s, and 70s called girly candles. They have an awful lot of candy that is, uh, is not available anymore. Let's just go through this. I just love, I love those candles. I love some of the, the food they have. Um, they have some nice uh, fabric. They have a tape recorder. They have these great sheets. The Charlie Brown. It's great pumpkin sheets. Just something interesting. An awful lot of food in here, just to let you know that's really good. All sort of candies. Um, but just a lot of interesting stuff. And of note, uh, if you remember this from the 70s, Lemon Up shampoo and gee your hair smells terrific they also have it not a lot about this magazine but um, you can subscribe to it it's not a magazine excuse me it's a catalog it's free and they have really kind of nice stuff i have ordered some stuff from them especially the the food like these little mini hazelnut pumpkins how cute and how nice they look uh, to serve to your guests the quality has been good. I ordered a fruitcake from here and it was delicious. And um, look at these little marzipan, once again, 
fall items that are cute. So just, if it's free, if you've never heard of them, um, as for catalog, they're fun to look at. Christmas one's even nicer than this. They have a lot of Christmas toys and so forth. Let's go on to the ornament issue. And then we'll announce the winner. So, I'm going to be able to do each one individually because they're big enough to show. So we're just going to go through this. This one's called Black Work Journey by Blue Christmas. Okay. This one is by Julia uh, Gula Mand Manfredini called The Christmas Dress. And why don't they have, I'll have to show it to you here. It's that dress, the Christmas dress. Next we have Julia Lucas Designs. This one is called Frosted Elegance. Now we have KST Designs, Kimberly Tyree. This one is called Little Blue Angel. I like this one, Snow, Snowflake Stitchery, Sarah Richards, called Mary and Jesus Stained Glass. Um, I really like it. This one is called Crystal Snowflake by Elizabeth Spurlock. It's small. This one is by Arlene Cohen. I've watched her floss two videos. They're very nice. Uh, sil sil silvery Lace Snowflake. And she looks like a nice person, too. Arlene Cohen. Next is Deck the Halls, Fireside Originals, Carol Grant, Winter White Sleigh. I like this a lot. I love the red fabric and I love the uh, little bells. Next, Franny Ritter, Ritter Flower Quilt Square. Next, uh, Lou Who Stitches, Cynthia Young, Holly Jolly Peppermint Wreath. That's really cute. I don't like it on white again. I think that would look really cute on maybe green or something fabric. I don't know. Uh, by Nicoletta Ferrudu. This one's called Red Christmas. by Patricia Ann Designs, Christmas Holly 2019. By Mistletoe Kisses, uh, excuse me, by Pickle Barrel Designs, who's Nancy Greenberg, Mistletoe Kisses. Once again, I don't like the white fabric. I, the design is adorable. How cute that would look, like with the Bah Humbug fabric. <laughs> but again, I like them, so. This is Ursula Michael called Ursula Michael Jingle Bells. Next is From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy called Poinsettia Sampler. I do like this a lot. Once again, I don't like the white fabric. Well, maybe it's cream, but still. Fabric makes it. I like the design a lot. I like I like the poinsettia. I like the finish. Next, here comes Santa Claus. We've got Hot House Petunia Designs by Ellis Porter. This is very cute. Next, we have uh, 
outfit work by Anna Chinoto, La Bottega del Mer Meravigli de Anna. This is adorable and I like the finish. That is so cute, sort of a Norwegian looking Santa. Lucy Heaton cross stitch design, fluffy Santa. Ha <laughs> ha. Mrs. Claus by uh, Praiseworthy S Stitches, who are Pam Lewis and Susan Rome. It's awfully cute. Fabric looks purple. Is it purple? No, it's blue. Periwinkle. Winter Sky by Lakeside Linens. This is awfully cute, too. Primitive Acorns, who is Teresa Mergita, House of Santa. Is there? This is so cute. This is actually a lot of stitching. That is so adorable. <laughs> I think that's so nice. Uh, this one is by Deborah Dick, Tank Tempting Tangles. Let me see, the picture's so small. Let's see if I can find that here. Yeah, this picture's so small, let me show it to you on this one. It's that one. <laughs> it's funny, actually. The Stitcher Hood is Maria Warmke, Christmas Commute. Ver reminds me very much of Prairie School. I do like it. It's really pretty. I like the little moon. That's really nice. Yeah, there's something about that I just like. She does it on 14 count Black Ada. This is Tiny Modernist. Her name is Cheryl McKinnon, Holly Jolly Christmas. Next is Angel Stitching. It's called Joy. Next is Bobbin and Friend Sharon Geetzer called Flamingo Lights, which for whatever reason isn't on here. I'll have to show it to you here. Is that it? Yeah. Flamingo Lights. Next is Cross Stitch Sanctuary, Daniel Van Noyen, Home for Christmas. Cute, huh? Next is Doreen Cross Stitch called Cute Deer. Once again, there's no picture on her page. Cute Deer, which is, my goodness, which one is this? A little mistletoe at the top. Hmm. I don't know where the picture is. The picture's not here. How is that possible? Cute deer. Aha! It's this one. This little itty bitty one. No wonder. It is cute. Cute deer. Um, here we go. Faithworks Design, Nancy Waller, Mary You. Next, Fern Ridge Collections, who are Pat Cherry and Peggy Tipton, Meowy Christmas. So many. Next is Kitty's Christmas by Kesslins, who's Linda Kesky. So cute. So cute. Look at it. It's adorable. Next we have Lindy Stitches called Cats Love Christmas. Once again, got to go back here. Just to, here we go. Lindy Stitches Cats Love Christmas. I like the fabric. I think that's adorable. Okay. Next, how, Home for the Holidays. Charlotte's Web Charlotte Smith, Dr. Seuss Motto Sampler, 
Christmas will always be as long as we stand heart to heart and hand to hand. Next we have Gentle Pursuit. Um, it's called Welcome. The picture on here is really tiny, so this picture I'm going to show you. Welcome. That one. Um, Gracewood Stitches, Catherine, Kathy Bungard. This one is called Homespun Thistle Down. It's really pretty. Let me show you that on that other page because it looks much better there. Just hard to toggle back and forth. Uh, this one is called Peace by Manny Dodonna, Simona Busigleri, called Peace on Heart. Very cute. Um, this one is by Natalia Luneva called Christmas Tree. I like this a lot. This one's one of my favorites so far in the whole magazine, this one. Isn't that cute? Um, Swalik Stitchery, Carolyn Selden. It's called Perfect Stockings. Kitty one. Next is The Stockings Were Hung by Roveris. This is very, very nice. I like that a lot. The Stockings Were Hung. It's a beautiful finish. I love the fabric. Love the little stockings. That's cute. Next, The Count of Many Stitches, Jamie Suzanne Frank Retro Christmas Tree. Next, Joy to the World. We've got Dames of the Needle, and this is a Noel stocking. I love, love the colors, I love that yellow. That's real cute. Noel stocking, Dames of the Needle. She used aged saffron, actually, for that. Uh, this is Historic Handworks, The Christmas Bells. This is Crafty Cat Designs, Jane Bryant Groves, Happy Holiday. Very cute. Okay. Like the yellow one, Historic Handworks. This is My Big Toe, Glory to God on the Highest. Of course I like this one. This is The Heart of Christmas, Rosewood Manor, uh, Kathy, Karen Kluba. What is that? Once again, it's very small. I'm going to show it to you on the other one. Uh, Kathy Kluba. Where can I find this? Uh, oh my goodness gracious. Let me see. Where the heck is it? Yeah, it's in the middle here. Kathy Kluba. Um, Stitchy Fish Designs, Lee Fisher, Christmas Joy. Uh, Fairy Wool in the Wood, Cassandra Cavalca, uh, Conforti, Christmas Countdown. Once again, these are, for whatever reason, aren't showing up well, so I'm going to show you on the big one. It's this one. They look better here. I don't know. Countdown. That's cute. Then we've got Noel by Turquoise Graphics and Designs, Gunei Uyan. There you go. Noel. Pretty, but once again, the fabric doesn't do it anything. It doesn't do it justice. The fabric is just white fabric. I think it looked better on a colorful fabric. 
These are the Let It Snow, the Frosted Pumpkin, Snowflake, oh, I should not rub my eyes, Snowflake Sugar Cookie. This one is Knotted Tree Needle Art called Frosty Fun. Do you like that? This one is called Needle Bling Designs. It's Teresa Curry and Brian Stugelmaker, Winter Joy. This one is One of a Kind Heirlooms, Leslie the lovely Leslie Davis, who is a very nice person, <laughs> okay? I have spoken with her a number of times. Um, Bentley the Snowman. I like the gray fabric. Nice choice, nice choice. Um, this is Val's Stuff Snow Day. Never ends, does it? Now we've got Sherry Parker Designs while well, Visions of Sugar Plums. Um, this doesn't do it justice, so I'm going to do it in here. It's these two. While well, Visions of Sugar Plums. She has two. Um, this one is called Joy by Christy Schmitz. Some Bargello there. This one is called Tropical Christmas by EJV Designs, Emily J. Van. Tropical Christmas. <laughs> it's got little glasses on it. This one's Hand Blessings, Eileen Gurak, Fiesta Joy. This one is called Medina Originals, Linda Medina, Waving Gingerbread Boy. Uh, it's so tiny, I gotta show it to you on here. Waving Gingerbread Boy. Let's see if I can find that one. Where is the Waving Gingerbread? Oh gosh, let's look. Um, where the heck? No, I don't know, I'll have to show it to you on here. Waving Gingerbread Boy. right here. And then this one is called Sharon Pope Modern Christmas Tree. I like that one a lot. That's so cute. And then we've got Shoe Fly Needle Art Designs. These are called Ma and Her Kerchief and I'm in My Cap. <laughs> I know I saw a picture of that here. I gotta hold on. They are color coded up to a point, and then it doesn't show you anything. Where is that one? Ma in my cap. I gotta show it to you here. Here we go. It's these guys. See them? Little Aunt Jemima looking lady. <laughs> and then we've got. Daddy's Bubble Lights, Threaded Dream Studio, Katrina King. There's something about that I just like a lot. Um, I'll show you this one because it's really small. Here you go. That is so cute. It's the old Noma Lights. Once again, the fabric does not do it for me. But the actual design is just really awesome. Winter Wonderland. We've got Blue Ribbon Designs, Belinda Carl's Nace. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Nothing not to like about that. It's so pretty. Another beauty is Floss and Fleece. Kathleen Berlou looking out. Very pretty. And then we've got Lisa Leanne Designs, Furry Friends.
Then we've got Red Bird by Marnik Designs, Maria Golick. And that's this. It's sort of busy, but it is very pretty. It's called Red Bird. Um, then we've got MTV Designs, Marisa, Teresa Vitelli, Hello Christmas. There's no picture. So which one is it? Hello Christmas. It's got this guy. This is very pretty. It's got the little reindeer or deer. Then we've got Open Road, excuse me, Abode, Needleworks, Melanie Gilmore. Happy Holidays. I think we're almost done with this. Hard to believe. Then we've got Punachka Evdokia Nikoleva Christmas Bullfinch. That is a very, very pretty design. Christmas Bullfinch. And then we've got the little stitcher, Laura Romoller, called Christmas Robin. Very pretty design as well, and a beautiful finish. How cute. Is that it? Yep, and then there's some recipes in the back. Okay, so now we're going to announce the winner. I screenshot it, so hold on. I screenshot it. Let me see if I can find it. Um, hold on, let me look in my screenshots. So the winner of any of the fabrics that I showed of her choice, any, any of the, um, their eighth size, is why can't why won't this come up here we go but via random generator is brenda romero and she said hi i love your videos oop why i want that i love your videos and everything you show us please enter me for autumn time by country stitch i recently found your videos and i am so glad i did thanks again happy stitching that was very nice she was randomly chosen the next thing that will be given away or it's going to be just for you uh, floss two watchers um which will be uh the winner will be picked for the next video is uh this white is a zweigart piece of linen unknown who made this it's called rocky mountain and it's sort of a purple purple brown chocolate brown color and it's an eighth of fabric plus a needle minder a, a christmas needle minder and uh, you can tell me whether or not you like wreaths or Christmas trees or whatever, and it'll be a Christmas needle minder that I will make especially for you out of a vintage pin. And um, if you're not Jewish and don't celebrate Christmas or don't celebrate Christmas, I certainly can make something else for you. I can make a nice needle minder out of something else vintage. -y. That'll be very nice, I promise. Um, this fabric is 40 count. Uh, if you cannot stitch on 40 count, and then of course, uh, if you are the winner, I would have you uh, PM me and I will substitute something else. And the way you enter, the way you enter is going to be, you need uh, in the comments below, I want you to tell me which, which, uh, which one of the ornaments do you like best of the ones that I showed from Just Cross Stitch 2019 and why? Which one do you like best and why? And if you have a personal story, I just love it. It has an old Christmas tree, the Nomalite, because it reminds me of my, I don't care what you say, but why? Once again, thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you for being part of the Facebook page called the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche. I am so happy that, that, that I'm actually teaching people. People are learning, learning from my mistakes, but also learning about antiques, about vintage, about cross-stitch, maybe seeing some projects, maybe learning how to take a project and make it your own. And um, I thank you all. So from my house to yours, enjoy your day, keep stitching.